Hello everyone, uh, we're here today, one more day at the Cannes Film Festival, uh, the Orio Village, and uh, we have a special guest today with us, uh, our dear friend Chad Harper from Hip Hop Saves Lives. Uh, and uh, welcome, Chad. Thank you so much, it's an um, honor to be here. It's, it's crazy huh, that, that we have you here today. Um, you've been with us for almost a year on the platform. We have a great documentary uh, um, we, we made last year about Hip Hop Saves Lives and uh, the great mission you guys have and the, the work you're doing uh, with the kids in, in New York. So Chad, just give us a little intro, what you're doing, who you are, so people know um, what's happening here. Yes, yes. Uh, Hip Hop Saves Lives is a nonprofit organization that teaches humanity through hip hop. Uh, because hip hop came from humanity, hip hop was birthed from a gang peace treaty. And uh, we partner with my business partner, Joel, and his organization, Negus World. And together we form a youth program called Kids Helping Kids, a hip hop experience. And the reason we call it Kids Helping Kids is when we educate kids about the world we live in and local and national and global issues, um, we identify a hero and the kids write about the issue that they learned and celebrate the hero and then we shoot a music video and then they share the knowledge from the lesson that we gave them with their friends and their school classmates. Mm. So um, these kids are taking that education and mainly because, you know, it starts out because they love to rap and they love to sing and they love to dance and they want to be in a music video, but they have to uh, deliver the message, you know, properly. Um, so they pay attention to very interesting topics that they would not normally listen to. We educate them about self-love and respect and global warming and the conflict in the Congo. And, and these issues kids don't normally sit and retain, but because they get to sing and dance and rap and be in a music video, um, you know, they, they really pay attention. So it's, it's a great way to educate kids when they can express what they've learned through creative arts. So, and, and this is great, it's a great idea and, and uh, you know, people will see the, the, the work you're doing. How did it start? Like, uh, you know, just woke up one day and say, oh, I want to do this. How, how, how this, this project, this initiative, this amazing thing started? When I grew up, um, I listened to a lot of hip hop. And the hip hop that I grew up on was much more educational than what is projected on TV and, and radio today. And I realized that I had learned so many things about life through hip hop. Um, I learned about the history of Africa. I learned how to properly respect a woman. Um, I learned about eating habits and, and a lot of different things that is not in, the, in, in, in music uh, today that, that kids listen to. So it just, the idea came to me that I wanted to educate these kids on these things and have them learn from hip hop the way I did. But I figured it would be better, instead of me making all the music and trying to get them to listen to it, how about I educate them on these issues and let them write their own lyrics and perform their own lyrics so they retain it more. And then it's a youth talking to another youth mm. instead of an adult explaining something to a, a child. So it, it, the lesson kind of has a huge, a much more ripple effect because it's a, a, a kid helping a kid. So, you know, when you do these, can you just give us a little story? What's, what's one of those most amazing moments that you have experienced working with kids, music, hip hop, this, this experience? Um, I, I, I can tell you about one young gentleman. His name is Vega, Daniel Vega, and we call him Negus Vega. <laughs> and we met him at a homeless teen shelter um, three years ago in Manhattan. And um, I would say in he was an amazing talent, first of all, he's an amazing poet, and he was a natural leader. He actually um, started a poetry class at this homeless teen shelter on, on his own. So we knew that he was a leader, um, and then his talent was, was just impeccable. Um, so we worked with him very closely, and now he actually works for the, orga the, the organization um, to be living proof that how hip hop has really changed his life. Um, at first, when I met him, he was just a poet, and then he learned to rap, and now he learned to sing, and now he produces music. And he's like, I've learned so many uh, skills through the organization that he now gets to share with other youth. Uh, he's 23 now, going to be 24 this year, and you know, it's just an incredible honor to, to work with him and see his progress and growth through the organization. So there is, there is a conversion, right? A progression yes. from you know, when they start and, and, and you guys you know, help them. Absolutely. All the way until until the end, no. Uh, Absolutely. Can you tell us how uh, the, the the program works typically? Like, 
you know, a normal uh, year? How, how, how does it go so people know exactly what you guys are doing? Right, so my, uh, me, me and my business partner, Joel, we work in two different locations. It's very rare that we're able to actually be in the same location because we have a lot of contracts around New York City. Um, but essentially, uh, we both go out, and, and uh, he's at Casa Middle School in the Bronx, and I'm mainly at Brook Brooklyn Theater Arts High School uh, in, in Brooklyn. And Monday, we give an issue, uh, present to the kids an issue um, that we want to talk about and discuss, and we present the hero. And so the first day is the lesson, and then we also pick the beat. Sometimes the kids make the beat. We have an incredible beat maker named, um, his, his artist name is Shacked Up. So Shacked Up produces a lot of beats. The kids pick a beat, they start writing. Uh, by Tuesday, the, the song is pr pretty much written and mostly recorded. Uh, Wednesday, we finish the song. Thursday, we shoot the video. And by that next Monday, uh, the video is ready. So within a, one week, the kids have taken a lesson, um, written about it, recorded it, shot a video, and it, it's now released and ready to share with their friends, their family, and, and the world. So what happens with this video? It's online. What, what's, uh, what's the plan? How is social media helping you, your organization, the kids? Mm -hmm. to, be, to be known, to have that visibility? Yes, for, for example, well, first of all, the, the, the organizations that we write about or the heroes we, that we write about, we always send them the music video as a gift. Um, so, for example, we recorded, when, when you guys shot the documentary on us, we did a song for an organization called Playing for Change. Mm -hmm. So we send the video to them, and they put it on their website, and they put it on their Facebook page, and they tweet it, and they share it with their followers. So you have you know, kids at a high school with, um, that five or six or eight kids performed on one song, but later it has two, three thousand views. And you can see that um, the organization really appreciated it and sharing with their supporters. So often we get emails from people all over the globe uh, because we, you know, we tackle issues from all over the globe and we send the videos out and we get incredible emails of gratitude and people in tears and thanking us. <laughs> And we share those with the kids and letting them know that someone in Cambodia sent you, we had a lady in Cambo uh, Cambodia uh, ship 20 t-shirts all the way from uh, um, Cambodia to, to Brooklyn, actually the Bronx, to give those to the kids as, as a thank you gift. Um, so it's, it's just incredible to see the ripple effects that their songs and videos have. Hey, Chad, you travel a lot. Yes. You, you are a traveler and you love adventures. Indeed. Um, you, have, you have done amazing things this year. I know you have great partnerships. Why don't we just share that a little bit with, with everyone that is, that is watching? Uh, yeah, so again, um, Joel Sencillion is my business partner and, and Nigus World, um, and his organization is about self-empowerment. And he has this incredible once a year party. This was actually just the second year. Um, but this year, uh, the, well the first year, um, they had, I think, parties in 12 different countries around the world. And each party fundraised to, and they collectively fundraised to, to provide school lunches um, to an organization in Haiti called Project Haiti. Mm -hmm. um, I want to shout them out. And then, then this year, an organization called Love Football, which is in Brazil, and they build uh, soccer fields. So I think 20 countries around the world um, celebrated this year. And thousands of dollars were raised and donated to help build this soccer field. Um, we had actually two signed jerseys by Pele donated for us to auction off, which was really incredible. Mm -hmm. um, some of the guys from uh, the New York Cosmos, which is the soccer team in New York, um, donated jerseys. And uh, it was just an incredible night. We actually wrote and performed uh, a theme song that night. Um, so it was just an incredible night. And, you know, the, the work of, of Negus World and Hip Hop Stage Lives has, I mean, if, if I was to guess, I would say probably 60 different countries around the world. So and that's amazing. Huh? Um, now, you know, th there are a lot of uh, NGOs out there, people mm -hmm. trying to do great things. Um, if you have to give one advice for, for, for people out there that are trying to, mm -hmm. to get uh, um, causes or work with causes, mm -hmm. what, what would that be it, 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 based on your experience, right. everything you, you've done so far? I would say whatever your passion is, um, dive right into it. and. Give it away. Just that simple. Whatever you really, really love to do, do that and share it with the world and teach youth how to use it um, for them to share with the world. And you know, for youth, just having something that they really love and having a mentor um, and an and older person support that creative art um, means the world to them. And it gives them a lot of self-esteem when they can find 
um, and, and see their abilities through a creative art, art expression. And just having that is, I think, enough for a lot of youth to just maintain and, and finish school and, and start a career and always maintain their love for their creative art. What is next for Hip Hop Saves Lives? Our goal now, right now, we have the I Love You campaign. And I love you. And I love you. <laughs> I love you too. Thank you. And this is something because I've traveled to a lot of different countries. I've been to Haiti a bunch of times and, and um, Brazil, um, Palestine, and India and teaching workshops with a lot of kids there. And we record songs and videos, but when I leave, they, a lot of these places don't have the equipment to continue. Mm. So the I Love You campaign is we're selling these t-shirts and the proceeds will fund 100 portable studios that will be donated to 100 community centers around the globe that serve the world's most underserved children to give them a voice, to teach them the original purpose of hip hop, um, which was to maintain the gang peace treaty and promote peace through in, in the neighborhoods, um, to make music in that vein, to shoot videos. And we're going to collect all the music and stream it on one online radio station and on one um, um, music video website to share with the world and show that just like hip hop came from a lot of homeless kids and street kids and kids living in abandoned buildings, they've created this incredible music genre that has rippled around the world. Let's continue that tradition of giving those kids a platform. Mm. Um, you know, all across the globe and see what amazing art comes from that. So that's what that's about. And once we have those 100 portable studios in place, the, we're going to launch the Global Community Center, um, which will allow these kids to go on the internet and get lessons of the week and write music and videotape themselves because with the, with the portable studios, we're giving them GoPro cameras so they can videotape. So they'll send in their lyrics and they'll send in their video and we'll have a master editing se a center. So we'll place you know, a kid in Africa with a kid in, 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 uh, in Europe and a kid in South America all on one song and one video and, and share their different perspectives around the same issue and see how they, they, they might vary or, or, or differ. So how can people get involved? If, if I want to help, uh, what's the easiest way to? The, um, go to hiphopsaveslives.org and make a donation, buy a t-shirt. Um, share our kids' videos. Um, also go to negusworld.org and support you know, the, the movement of, of their Negus Worldwide Party, which is going to happen next year again. And um, we, we don't know uh, what, what the proceeds will go to. We're thinking of some creative ways to um, get organizations from all over the globe to send a letter wish, you know, requesting that they receive um, you know, the, the proceeds. But it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. My last question. Yes. The Oreo question. Yes. Dream Inspire Act. What does that mean? Dream. <laughs> dream. I think that every human being has a dream of how they would like their life to be. You know, and, and if you focus on that and, and, you, and you give a lot of attention to that, um, that will inspire your life on a daily basis. It would change how you interact with people. It would change what you focus on. So your dream will inspire you eventually to act. My dream was to hear um, and see more hip hop music that educates the world like I used to listen to, that helped mold me into the man that I am. And I was inspired um, to write songs like that. And then um, to act on that, I reached out to kids and now they do it. Thank you very much, Chad. We have a little surprise for everyone. It's All right. coming. Uh, we'll show it soon. Uh, happy yes. to have you here at the Oreo Village, and we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. It's an honor and a pleasure, <laughs> and I love you. <laughs>